Let's set the scene in the battle for New Vegas, specifically between the NCR and the Legion. The New California Republic has occupied the Mojave for around three years. They have had minor fights with local tribes and a major battle against the Brotherhood of Steel at Helios 1 during the NCR's Operation Sunburst. They won that battle, though not easily, it severely damaged the Brotherhood and forced them into hiding. The NCR also lacked strong supply lines coming into the region, so the forces they had in New Vegas weren't getting the proper support they needed from the nation backing them. Getting supplies to the area only became more difficult when a package from Enclave Base Navarro triggered the activation of pre-war nuclear missile silos along Route 127, destroying the road, a tale for another time. With all this being said, the NCR does not have a solid grip on the Mojave, New Vegas, or Hoover Dam. This seems like an excellent opportunity for Caesar and his legate and right-hand man at the time, Joshua Graham. Joshua would lead the first assault on Hoover Dam. The attack was largely carried out on top of the dam where the Legion would push the NCR troops back to the middle of the dam quite quickly. Graham would then order his entire army to push through the dam and continue to assault. He would have lower ranking recruits in the front and veterans in the back. As the Legion pushed forward, they would meet severe resistance by NCR troops holding the middle of the dam while also getting picked off by First Recon and the Rangers led by Hanlon. In response, Graham would order his veterans to charge First Recon and the Rangers at their vantage point. The Rangers and Recon unit would fall back and lead the charging Legion soldiers into Boulder City, which was lined with C4. The NCR would detonate the town as the bulk of Legion forces entered and swarmed the area. The younger recruits of the Legion had already fallen into disarray during the battle, now things were much, much worse. Graham was forced to retreat and bring his remaining troops back to Caesar in shame. As many know, Caesar would then order his Praetorian Guard to have Graham tossed in pitch, set on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon to send a message to his legion, to everyone beneath him, that failure would not be accepted, and that it might be better to die trying than turn tail to Caesar. This is the point where Graham would be replaced by Legate Lanius, but Lanius would change the direction of the Legion and its goals for some time. This goes to show the sway and respect Lanius has even early on in his rise to power. He would turn the Legion's focus on the east, towards Utah and Colorado. They would add 14 tribes in five years to its ranks. They would also defeat the NCR at the Battle of Willow Beach and the Battle of the Arizona Spillway, pushing the NCR off the eastern side of the Colorado River. Now, one might wonder, why would the NCR not assault the Legion after forcing them to retreat in the first Battle of Hoover Dam? The NCR considered this as well, however, when they detonated Boulder City, they killed over a hundred of their own NCR soldiers and rangers. The destruction of Boulder City was a desperate Hail Mary from an unprepared NCR. They were in no form to go after Caesar and the Legion. The first battle of Hoover Dam was close, and far too close for the NCR's liking. If anything, it was a frightening wake-up call that their position in the region was not as stable as it needs to be for long-term success. Since the NCR has won the first battle of Hoover Dam, they had camp searchlight sabotage with radioactive waste destroying the base, the Legion would establish a base on the Nevada side of the Colorado in Cottonwood Cove, they begin to establish their spy network throughout the Mojave, and as stated, win the battles of Willow Beach and the Arizona Spillway on their side of the Hoover Dam. The Legion would also win the battle for the town of Nelson, securing this location along with a nearby mine. They would destroy the town of Nipton as well, but not claim the location. This attack was more of a display to the NCR who were stationed not far away at the Mojave outpost. The Legion has been winning battles and killing about a thousand NCR soldiers every year. Meanwhile, the NCR has lost battles, had a prisoner escape at the NCRCF with the Powder Gangers, struggles severely with the Fiends, and they're still not receiving the support from California that they need. Point being, by the time of New Vegas, it seems very clear that the Mojave is at the legitimate threat of being overran and enslaved, and the New Vegas Strip could be turned into Caesar's wasteland Rome. Furthermore, Lanius has been preparing for this moment and learning through practice on the tribes of Utah and Colorado. He led campaigns in those regions where he would not only add 14 tribes to the Legion, but destroy five others. He would have a difficult campaign against the Hangdogs of Denver, Colorado, where he would learn the importance of supply lines when his forces were running very low on supplies, being so far stretched from their homeland. The NCR has suffered from supply line issues, but has done little to correct this fault. Lanius is coming prepared. With the weight of success or failure placed squarely upon his shoulders, failure clearly meaning death, given how the last legate who failed Caesar was treated. 
Failure to the disjointed NCR means those in charge go back to California and mount another defensive approach with supply lines less stretched and the problems of the Mojave becoming someone else's. The NCR is losing the second battle of Hoover Dam against the Legion without the intervention of the Courier Benny or House. Their forces are stretched thin, undersupplied, and have incredibly low morale. They don't have a purpose in the region other than the greed of their government. There's not strong support for this campaign from the greater public of the NCR. The soldiers are getting sent off to foreign lands to die while their families are wondering why or what for. The Legion doesn't have this issue due to its use of slaves and the state religion and the cult of Mars, which those in the Legion were raised to believe from a young age that Caesar is the son of Mars, Mars being the Roman god of war and the Legions as well. They believe it was Mars who cleansed the earth and fire during the Great War so that his son Caesar could claim it. They find purpose where the NCR does not. The NCR sees value in the area with locations like the Strip, Hoover Dam, and Helios 1, but they don't have a great cause for the people. It's simply expansionist. Caesar has the narrative that he will cross the Colorado River and take New Vegas just as Julius Caesar once crossed the Rubicon River and took Rome. He has an army of brainwashed believers who adhere to the mythos of himself and Lanius. They fear and respect them and believe in their cause. The state of the NCR and the Mojave is largely depicted as a tragic one. If the player is familiar with the story of the NCR that grew from Vault 15 and Shady Sands from the original Fallout to Fallout 2 and their humble beginnings, now by the time of New Vegas it's exciting to see them having grown into a true nation. But then slowly as the game progresses, you begin to see shortcomings, weak spots, and it's your chance to help the NCR correct course once again, to follow in the footsteps of the Vault Dweller and the Chosen One. What cost have the actions of the player character had on the story of this faction? In a way, the overarching story of the West Coast Fallout games has involved the player character bringing back the old world or some version of it recreated by the NCR. From Fallout to 2 to the New Vegas, the NCR has rapidly multiplied and grown, seeing much success in defeating the Brotherhood of Steel and the Enclave. Perhaps this was obvious to others, but I believe this whole time, New Vegas is putting the NCR in the seat of the underdogs, losing the fight unless you come to their rescue. It's also displaying the quote unquote good guys of the series in a complex gray area where the hopeful and idealistic faction of old has become jaded and too big for its own good. The public has lost faith in its government. Politicians fight for their own benefit rather than the nation. There is infighting between branches of the military, with General Oliver and the NCR Army conflicting with Chief Hanlon and the Rangers. I think many viewers hear some of my comments about the NCR and think I am strongly anti-NCR or pro-Legion. At the end of the day, it's just a game for me. A game that will likely never see a sequel or a true canonical follow-up. My points are ones simply drawn from the often subtle in-game narrative. What are the devs trying to tell us about the game? I think this whole time they were telling us that the New California Republic is losing. 